your kid has been sick, they've been doing better, and then they wake up with a pink eye. What to do? Are they contagious or can they go to school? Do they need medication or will it resolve on its own? Do you need to get them into the clinician's office ASAP or can you watch and wait? This video will review different causes of pink eye or the medical term conjunctivitis and discuss how each type is managed. I'll also go over when it's important to take your child to their clinician, so make sure you stick around to find out. I am Dr. Mona, a pediatrician and mom. I help empower parents with easy to understand, evidence-based information, so you can make the best choices for your children. Make sure to like this video and subscribe here to Peds Doc Talk TV to stay up to date on all the latest videos and new content. Conjunctivitis is inflammation of the conjunctiva, which is the mucous membrane that covers the inside of the eyelids and the outer surface of the eye. Usually, the conjunctiva are transparent, but when it gets inflamed, the eye appears pink or red, what you see in pink eye. Conjunctivitis can be caused by an infection that can be viral or bacterial. Viruses that infect the upper respiratory tract and cause inflammation can also cause inflammation in the conjunctiva of the eye. But conjunctivitis can also be caused by allergies, irritation, or trauma. Not all conjunctivitis or pink eye is infectious like many people sometimes think. But let's talk about the very common causes of conjunctivitis in kids, viral conjunctivitis and bacterial conjunctivitis and the differences. When a friend says pink eye, they're likely talking about infectious reasons, but make sure you watch until the end about those other sneaky but extremely important causes of conjunctivitis or pink eye. Viral pink eye is a reddening of the eye or eyes. It is more likely to affect both eyes and is usually associated with red, watery eyes. It often presents with other viral symptoms like fever, runny nose, sore throat, or cough, or it can be the first sign a child is sick. Viral pink eye can cause crusting of the eyelashes in the morning, but it is less likely to have associated eye discharge that is consistent throughout the day. If discharge is noted, it's typically mild and thinner. It appears less like pus and more like clear mucus or wateriness. Viral pink eye will resolve spontaneously on its own and no antibiotic drops are needed. Yes, you heard that right. An antibiotic drop will not fix a viral pink eye. And I know many of you have probably got prescriptions for viral pink eye. It is contagious during the initial days of illness and good hand washing should be encouraged. Usually symptoms progress for three to five days and then slowly resolve over one to two weeks. Bacterial pink eye is much different than viral pink eye. This presents with eye redness and thick pus-like discharge from one eye, although sometimes it's gonna affect both eyes. Discharge can be yellow, white, or green and usually reoccurs throughout the day, even if you attempt to wipe it clean. How I like to describe the differences between viral and bacterial pink eye so if you have red eyes and you have some discharge and you wipe it away in the morning and it doesn't come back, that is most likely the normal viral pink eye crusties. But if it oozes and oozes throughout the day and you're constantly wiping and cleaning those eyes, we're headed into bacterial pink eye territory. Eyes often appear stuck shut in the mornings with crusty eyelashes. Bacterial pink eye can occur in isolation, but ear infections and pink eye often do occur at the same time as some bacteria that like to follow virus infections can cause bacterial ear infections and bacterial pink eye. Make sure to check out my YouTube video on ear infections for more information on what causes them and the symptoms kids often show if they have one. Well, both viral and bacterial pink eye are contagious and is spread through contact with eye drainage and contaminated objects. So for example, your kid rubs their eyes and touches a toy and another kid touches that same toy and then touches their eyes, there we go. It often spreads quickly through childcare facilities because of all the playing and surface touching that's occurring. Good hand washing is important to reduce the spread. For bacterial pink eye, a child can return to daycare or school once they are fever free and have been on the drops for a full, full 24 hours minimum. So this is where things get a little bit tricky. 
So viral pink eye does not need antibiotic drops. I want to print this out and throw it from a plane because so many people get overprescribed antibiotic drops for viral pink eye. Once your child's eye discharge is resolved and they are fever free for 24 hours, they can return to childcare. But with viral pink eye, those symptoms can linger, just like a cold can linger. Unfortunately, many childcare facilities have certain strict rules on pink eye and actually treat all pink eye as bacterial. And many clinicians have sort of followed along and just started over prescribing eye drops like candy for all pink eye when it's not technically needed. A few comments about eye drops for viral pink eye that I've heard. The first one, but doctor, I swear it helped even though we didn't have any heavy mucus discharge. The antibiotic drops prescribed for bacterial pink eye can seem to help viral pink eye due to the anti-inflammatory properties that drops can have. But it's not healing the virus because as I said, antibiotic drops work on bacteria and not viruses. The second thing I've heard, my doctor gave my kids drops for pink eye, but it's still there five days later. This is likely happening because it's viral and an antibiotic drop will not fix a pink eye that's viral. If your child has persistent pink eye in the setting of cold symptoms, stuffy nose or a cough, and does not have the heavy drainage I described for bacterial pink eye, this is all likely viral. If drainage persists or they are in pain in the eye, get them evaluated again to make sure we're not missing another cause. The third thing, doctor, I can't have my kids stay out for a week. Is it harmful to just take the drops so I can send them back even though I know it's a virus? Likely your child will be fine if they were given antibiotic drops for a virus, but this goes more into medical need and antibiotic stewardship. My preference is not to prescribe meds to appease policies when it's actually not treating anything. In an ideal world, yes, we would stay home if we have that bacterial oozing pink eye, but facilities would have policies similar to colds to monitor and manage viral pink eye. So if a child is ill appearing, has a fever, or in this case has that copious discharge, they should stay home until they get antibiotic drops. But a child who has red eyes for 10 days without discharge should not have to stay home, similar to a child with sniffles who is playful and without a fever. And by the way, antibiotics for viral pink eye will not reduce spread, which is unfortunately why viral pink eye does spread so fast, even for those on antibiotic drops because it is not doing anything to prevent the spread. The best prevention of spread of viral pink eye is good hand hygiene, similar to limiting the spread of colds, which are also caused by viruses. So we've covered the infectious or most common causes of pink eye that you see in children, but what about those non-infectious causes? Let's talk about allergic conjunctivitis. Allergic conjunctivitis is caused by an airborne allergen such as pollen coming into contact with the eye and causing a hypersensitivity or allergic response to the allergen. This results in a release of chemicals like histamine, which causes itching, the hallmark symptom of allergic conjunctivitis. If your child has very itchy, watery, red eyes, they are likely having allergic conjunctivitis. Another sign can be puffiness under the eye and a very minor runny nose compared to the thick mucus of a cold. Rubbing the eyes can make the redness and itching worse. Symptoms may resolve on their own, but over-the-counter eye drops or prescription eye drops can help speed up the resolution of symptoms. Zatador is an over-the-counter antihistamine eye drop approved for children three years and older. Patidae is an alternative option approved for children two years and older. These drops should work to stop the itching sensation and eye irritation or redness. Discuss with your clinician if either of these drops is a good option for your child. More on seasonal allergies coming later this year, right before allergy season, so make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss it. Another cause of non-infectious conjunctivitis is irritation from trauma or chemicals. Irritants or chemicals coming into contact with the eye can cause eye pain redness, and increased tearing. Usually with irritant conjunctivitis, there will be a history of someone touching their eye immediately before the symptoms started. Symptoms generally spontaneously resolve within 24 hours after the eye clears the chemical with tears. Flushing the eye with clean, lukewarm tap water can also help alleviate discomfort sooner. The idea here is get that irritant out and then the eye will start to feel better. Foreign bodies or a particle or object stuck in the eye 
will also cause an eye to appear red. This will usually also be accompanied by increased tearing, a sensation of something stuck in the eye, light sensitivity, so your child looking at the light and just wanting to shut it, and eye pain. Often kids won't want to open their eyes because of the discomfort that they feel from that light sensitivity. Sometimes a foreign body will dislodge on its own, but sometimes it needs to be removed by a medical professional. It's really important to remember that foreign bodies or these irritants can happen in children and not all pink eye, like I mentioned, is due to viruses and bacteria. So let's talk about when to bring your child in for conjunctivitis. As I mentioned before, if there is a thick pus-like discharge from the eye, I'd recommend taking them to their clinician. They may have bacterial conjunctivitis and need antibiotic drops. Another reason to take them in is if your child is complaining of persistent or severe eye pain. Infectious or allergic causes of conjunctivitis can cause mild eye discomfort, but if it's persistent or severe, it's important to rule out more serious causes such as a foreign body in there or something else that might be going on. If they're showing symptoms of a possible foreign body in the eye, like I said, sensitivity to light, complaining of persistent eye pain, or trouble opening their eyes, the clinician may use a test in the office called a fluorescein stain to assess for a foreign body in the eye. It's a very painless procedure where a dye is applied to the eye and a blue light is used to look for a foreign body. This test is also used to look for a corneal abrasion or a minor small cut on the clear covering of the eye, which can cause the redness we see in pink eye. I will do a separate video on eye injuries in kids where I'll talk about corneal abrasions. Another reason to take your child in is if there are concerns for visual changes or eyelid swelling and redness. Periorbital cellulitis is a bacterial infection of the skin surrounding the eye and is treated with oral antibiotics and sometimes in severe cases, IV antibiotics. And as always, you should bring your child in for evaluation if something doesn't seem right to you or they're not improving as you would expect. There you have it. There are many causes of conjunctivitis and they are all managed differently. To recap, bacterial pink eye. This is when your eye or eyes have crustiness, redness, and a lot of thick discharge that keeps returning even if you wipe it. In viral pink eye, this will likely affect both eyes, although one eye can be affected, and the eyes are red, watery, they're not very itchy, with some possible thin mucus associated with cold-like symptoms. You're not gonna see that heavy discharge like in bacterial pink eye. Allergic conjunctivitis, the eyes are itchy, watery, and red, and sometimes associated with sneezing and a runny nose. With an irritant, the eye is going to be painful, watery, and red, and will slowly improve on its own once that irritant is removed. And a foreign body, you're gonna feel a sensation of something stuck in the eye with a watery red eye with light sensitivity and trouble opening the eye. I think it's important to know these differences so you know how to best proceed. If you found this information helpful, please like and share this video and make sure to subscribe to be the first to know about new videos published. I'll see you all next week for another video here on Pete's Doc Talk TV. Stay well.